It's Wyoming Entertainers Twins, Annie and Amy Smith. It's Wyoming, where I belong, next on Wyoming Chronicle.
our sincere thanks to Mike Goldoni with Wyoming PBS. He's the video editor that put together the beautiful video we just saw with film from Over Wyoming, which is a Wyoming PBS production yes. that we'll see later this year um, to the beautiful Wyoming where I belong. Annie yes. and Amy, yes. welcome <laughs> Thank to you, Wyoming Chronicle. What a treat. It's, it's so great. <clears throat> Thank you for having us. Yes. We're in the beautiful Laramie Plains Museum. It's a beautiful mm -hmm. place. Why did you write Wyoming, Where I Belong? What was the genesis it, of that song? You know, we've discovered that we have such a great response on the song, and we've had people from all parts of the world just say, I love that song, it brings me a feeling of home. And it won an International Music Award. But for, it was for yeah. American culture and Western heritage, mm -hmm. and we were very honored for that, mm -hmm. because we wanted to incorporate all parts of Wyoming in the song, so mm -hmm. we wanted to include everyone, and it was a family up in um, um, Jackson Hole, Wyoming, they have a beautiful guest mm -hmm. ranch called the Red Rock Ranch. And so they asked us to write this song. They'd heard us sing, and they said, would you write a song about Wyoming? And they used it for the Nature Conservancy. Mm -hmm. And so it was debuted. We went to New York, Central Park, and it was a big deal because outside they had Marvin Hamlish who was conducting a symphony, and they had mm -hmm. all these guest stars, oh, journalists. Oh, it was an outdoor concert. Mm -hmm. It was a gorgeous it evening, was. and we had... Uh, Don Henley from oh, yeah. the Eagles was there. A lot of wonderful people there. And it was a large orchestra. Marvin Hamlish was conducting it. And we had the opportunity to debut it with these life-size images of Wyoming. Beautiful. So they, we had gorgeous images of all parts all of Wyoming. Scenes. The Bighorns, the Tetons, and the Prairie, Golden Prairie. And so that was a lot of fun to do that. Now but you both have a long history. We do. Oh, Wyoming. yeah. You were we born do. in Wyoming. Fifth generation. Mm -hmm. you, you went to high school in Wyoming? Yeah. Yes, and yes. I forgot to tell you that from that, Good Morning America was filming us on that oh, yeah, show. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, and I, I have to tell you the journey of our song because the journey um, took us from Good Morning America. That song then led to BBC Radio. You know BBC Radio? Sure. On, it was in England, Ireland, and Scotland. Little in Denmark, I think. Yeah. And so, and so that song started airing there. And we were performing in overseas because of the BBC radio, and we were singing in England. <laughs> and the, <laughs> I know where you're going. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful here. People understand what, where Wyoming is. Yeah. Maybe. You, you know, that's what's so wonderful uh -huh. because we go back five generations. Our grandfather homesteaded in the Pine Bluffs area, and he was a cowboy, professional rodeo cowboy champion. Mm -hmm. And then our other grandfather homesteaded there about five generations or so. Mm -hmm. And so we were. Our background was just natural to us to write about our home. Of well, course. we didn't realize that it was so unusual because when we were singing in England, a lot of the British people, I've never met anybody from Wyoming. <laughs> and they'd say, hey, play more. What was that? That's a terrible accent. <laughs> that was not a good accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, the crowd went crazy because this concert, it was a fundraising event. And we had these beautiful Oscar de la Renta dresses on. <laughs> and Annie's was champagne color. And it had a it sheer. Strapless. <laughs> and it was kind of sheer and ostrich feathers all the way down. Amy's dress, I have to tell you why I'm describing the dresses to you, you'll see why. <laughs> Amy's dress was black and had ruffles all the way down. And, and it's a very here. distinguished audience, so yes. they're getting very rambunctious. And Let's we're thinking, play wow. more, bravo, bravo, <laughs> more. They said play more, we couldn't figure out. They just loved our Wyoming music. <laughs> and we played our Wyoming song, and we found out later the reason, well, not maybe part of the reason, but there was a light, big, bright spotlight behind us, <laughs> and our dresses were definitely enhanced. I understand. <laughs> and so it was kind of a scintillating <laughs> evening that night. <laughs> but I loved it. Did you ever get off stage? Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> bravo, bravo. <laughs> this band standing up, cheering. Oh, bravo. <laughs> we still get emails on this song because we had one from oh, Romania and Czech Republic, and this one man I keep seeing, I can hear his voice saying, I love your music about the Wyoming. It reminds me of my home. <laughs> so I love that. Now you started m your, you, with music when you were very young. Oh, you Tell know, me about the early days of Annie and Amy and what, what you were playing and how you learned to play. We have a bunch of brothers in our house and so all, they all played trombone and one brother played piano, beautiful, oh, great yes. musicians mm -hmm. and they were basically our inspiration. I think so. They would play their music mm -hmm. and, and we would learn a lot from their choices of music. Our one brother studied classical piano. Mm -hmm. 
and dad played jazz trombone, and Mom. all the brothers played jazz trombone. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to play jazz trumpet. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't work out very well. No, I don't play that anymore. <laughs> but when you were young, you dialed the gong show. I want to hear more about that story. <laughs> yes. That was, well, we, you know how you would take family trips and we all pile into the station wagon. So nine of us, there five brothers and us, and the three little ones would be in the back. Mm -hmm. And we'd be looking out and we could see the road that way, the opposite way. <laughs> we were stuffed in this, and our top was full of luggage. And <laughs> so the boys wanted to go, our brothers would go to Universal City and Disneyland, but we grabbed mom and we went We want to wanna sing on Gong, gong Show. show. <laughs> I called them And you had seen mom, this on television yeah, when you were kids. on television. How old were you at the time? Oh, like I don't little, I don't know. Something like that. So By that time it was a road trip, we were getting bigger then. Yes. But it was, <laughs> we got, I called up the Gong Show, and of course you had to have a guardian with you. So because we, we were underage, we auditioned several times. Oh, yeah. We were in Hollywood for weeks because they had to have several auditions. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, now we need your transcripts <laughs> from, from school. school. It's and, summertime. <laughs> and they needed our transcripts. So I don't know why. And then we had to be escorted to the bathroom just to... I have no idea why, but all I know is we then won. Then we ended up in a professional show for some reason, and so we won that show. And J.P. Morgan was a judge, and turned out her sister ended up coming to Cheyenne. Living here. Later in life. Really? It was amazing. Mm -hmm. so, and Jamie Mercer. Farr mm -hmm. and, um, was a judge as well. And we won $516.32. No. <laughs> <laughs> More so, important, you didn't get gone. No, <laughs> we didn't. We <laughs> so actually exciting. won, so it was exciting. It was. It was then fun. through the years, um, you continued to play. Oh. What sort of events did you migrate towards and enjoy? Yeah, that led to television shows in Nashville. Mm -hmm. So we would get on Nashville television Being on the gong show. show. Being on the gong show. Led to Nashville. It did, it did, because we have never been to Nashville, mm -hmm. didn't know what the Grand Ole Opry was, mm -hmm. so we did. Let's take another family trip. So we all went to Nashville, <laughs> and it was we exciting. We in the station wagon. In oh the station. yeah, <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> With peanut butter sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> and then you, you performed at the Grand Ole Opry. Opry you performed yes. at the Blue yeah. Cafe. And that now I must say that took several years. Yes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't our first trip okay. to no. Nashville. No. The first trip to Nashville is when we discovered the banjo and country music, and we loved it. The Grand Ole Opry. But after a while, after a couple of years, we we met some people who had a television show and they asked us to be on it because we won the gong show and uh, we TNN is what it was it would be the old time when they interview shows and we'd come on and they'd interview us and from there that led to a producer seeing yes. us and he actually saw us on the mm -hmm. television show the Ralph Emery show mm -hmm. and the noon show those were big shows oh, yes they were and the producer he was a big famous producer for um, he recorded Tanya Tucker that and, era. and he saw us on the show and that's kind of how we got discovered <laughs> and which led to our recording deals we had Warner Brothers records in between was um, you both went to Stanford yes, yes. we did yes we and thought you that studied was important. that we, we studied um, English, English literature, literature and, and European history so we could take I loved languages so that took us overseas we mm. wanted to study overseas because in Vienna it was so romantic because they have the ball season there <laughs> So we went to the opera every night and studied, and I, I'll never forget that because that was a wonderful time in our lives. Well, we also sang for the ambassador mm -hmm. of, of Austria because, at that time. Now, that was interesting because yeah. before we went to Stanford, we were singing for President Reagan at a wonderful event, and so she had heard about that, and so we she was the ambassador. Von that was Dahl. in California? No, we were in, in California. Washington. The show for President Reagan was in California. That's right, okay. that's right. Mm -hmm. and so when we, we flew out for that. So then we... She knew we had sung in USO tours, and mm -hmm. um, so she invited us to sing, and she was the ambassador to, the U.S. ambassador to Vienna, and her name was Helene van Damme. And it was wonderful because she knew that we sang, she wanted us to sing for the military men that were over there. They were homesick. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we went to her home and sang oh, yeah. for, they had a big event there at the embassy. And, and we sang a couple of times for her mm -hmm. at the embassy, and we actually sang for the Bundesrepublican president yes, as well. Yes, we did. And it was, in, in a weird way, we became, we became, I don't know how to, representing Wyoming is how we felt, mm -hmm. is that we were representing our, our home just by by being in this other country and singing for these military men and wonderful. they were so homesick and we felt honored that they kept inviting us to sing for these marines and the who else did we sing for Lada? they had a, a different representation it was mm -hmm. interesting I wrote a story about that because the attache for Helene van Damme I don't know if I, this is inter interesting I think I can say that because he turned out to be a spy his name was Herr Bloch, Herr Bloch. And we were very 
cognizant of that because the way he questioned us when we first came in and he had to question us. Did you realize this at the time? No, no. Uh -huh. we found okay. out later. We're kind of feeling very He says, tell me about Wyoming. Where what are does you your from? family do? <laughs> and he wanted to find out if we were bad people. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're from Wyoming. Then they came to our dorm rooms. We each had um, Viennese um, roommates. Mm -hmm. And so they came to our rooms and took our guitars to say, we want you to sing these songs for the military. <laughs> we, okay. <laughs> and then they drove us in the limousine with Helene Van Damme, the ambassador, drove us there and we said, well, we don't have our guitars. So some military man came back to our roommate's dorm and said, we need the girls' guitars. <laughs> so there was, um, I'm curious about your time with USO. Oh, yes. um, Tell yes. me how that started and what you ended up doing for the USO. Oh. There's one special <coughs> time. We, we toured several places in the Caribbean, Panama, well, Cuba. Well, because we performed for President Reagan, Bob Hope was there a lot of the time. So then we auditioned for the USOB, and they actually came out from Washington, D.C. to audition us in Cheyenne. So you inter actually auditioned in Cheyenne yes. for the USO? Yes, mm -hmm. we did. Interesting. And they set up tours for us. We had to hire a background band or backup band, and they set up the tours, and they were unusual tours. And yes. one time, one tour I remember specifically mm -hmm. was, um, was during Christmas. And it was during Alaska, and I don't know if we want to talk about Christmas, but it was a very special time sure. because we'd already been to the Caribbean. We'd been to Cuba. Panama. Been to Panama. Mm -hmm. Those were interesting stories. But this one particular one in Alaska was during Christmas, and mm -hmm. we were homesick. Yes, we, we were, were. Mm -hmm. still in, just out of high school. And uh, we had our backup band, and we were in clear Alaska, and the we were instructed by the commander to not sing any Christmas music because everyone was too homesick. So we but it's didn't. Christmas time. How did that work? Oh, they, they were didn't. so homesick. They just wanted rock, <clears throat> and so the, our band to open up a lot of rock, and we just played and played and played for hours. Mm -hmm. till midnight. Yeah, then at midnight there was a change in the feeling mm -hmm. of the room, so we just... Um, it was a huge ballroom, mm -hmm. like an old, a huge cafeteria, cafeteria. type thing. And uh, there were tables of, of ten and round tables and, and each table had a round candle and at midnight Amy and I were still homesick and wanting to call home and finally we decided to just pull out our guitars the band was on break That's right. we went back on stage and we just started singing an aria of the silent night that our mother taught us. You begin it with the, before you go into silent night it's something she learned at the great Catholic schools in New York, and so it was something the nuns would sing, <laughs> and so she taught that to us as little girls. So we pulled out our guitar, one guitar, and opened that up. Yeah, and, and we sang, Oh, oh the moonlight plains, the angels winging silent night. And it goes on like that, and when we started singing that, the entire room stopped. We had cooks come in from, from the kitchen, they did. we had the commander come in, and the whole room just, just dead quiet. quiet and it was black the room was black and the only thing the light was just the candles on the mm. tables they stood Ooh. up and, and held those held candles. the candles above their heads and we all started crying and singing and, and in the end the commander yeah. was okay oh yeah, yeah, yeah at the end it was it, and then after that we all just laughed and then we sat down we sat by the fire and had just a jam session mm -hmm. there are great guitar players there that we yeah. all just sang anything from what anybody knew country uh -huh. roads or mm -hmm. something so the genres you're most comfortable with are? Good question. I, you know, <coughs> we grew up with jazz and classical, mm -hmm. studied classical yes. music, and studied voice, voice and theory. But we loved country. As soon as we heard the banjo, we just probably folk was our brother taught us rock. Our oldest brother taught us rock songs on the riffs late at night, so we learned a lot of rock things. But I'd say that the banjo brought us into mm -hmm. country and and mm -hmm. just loved the Nashville. Well, it was happy. It was happy <laughs> sounding country pop. I'd oh. say and a, a lot of folk, and we have mm -hmm. a lot of. Our, I guess we call our own music actually derives from being from Wyoming, and we didn't realize it was a different sound, but it is. And we've written, you know, we started writing, Craig, as you said, when we were little. So I think we have about 400, 400 songs or 800. or We don't know. We just have a whole wall mm -hmm. of, of CDs, thanks to you. You're, you. You were telling us how to translate our... Old. But your father gave you some instruction on every song that you wrote. He, every time we sang him <coughs> a new song, we'd say, we say, now, Dad, how do you like this one? Or Mom, or we'd play to anybody who would listen <laughs> yeah. to us, brother. And, and he said to make sure you record them because you do forget. Mm -hmm. So we would write um, guitar, vocal, and just get them down on a simple tape machine, whatever we had at that time, Little Girls Reel to Reel machines. Then we'd go to the studios in Boulder, Colorado, or, Calif or Colorado. And the Wyoming song was actually recorded 
with some musicians from the... Well, that's many well, years later. That's know, several still, hundred I'm songs just later. Just that was in Colorado. I was thinking <laughs> we, we recorded that in Wyoming, yes, Colorado. Yes, we did in Colorado. With so it wasn't Some nice. players from the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band. Mm -hmm. They were great. Your mother has a history in Wyoming that, that oh, yeah. <clears throat> people may remember with the Frontier days. Yes, our mother was <laughs> Miss Frontier. And also our cousin, we have several cousins who, and I shouldn't say several, we have cousins who were Miss Frontier as well. Mm -hmm. Mom was Miss Frontier. There's a long line. We go so far back because Wyoming was a big part of Cheyenne was where our families, both families, homesteaded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And your parents still live today? They yes, do. We, we are most blessed. grateful to so. Very blessed. Yeah. So yeah. after this time, you've been writing, you've been performing. Yes. What, what are you doing now with your career? Oh, you know, um, ironically, I'm, I'm newly married. <laughs> and uh, so our latest project, we're getting back into, we had, we had been doing some commercials in California. We lived yes. in California mm -hmm. for several years. And we were doing uh, national commercials out there. There's yeah. one song that we got to play on the banjo. I got to play this song because it was very lucky because they had never met anybody from Wyoming, in particular McDonald's commercial. They were a British production <laughs> company, and they just loved that we played the banjo. And this song is what we auditioned with, and that got us onto this national McDonald's commercial as well as overseas that they spent shipped it over to overseas to China. So this song, they loved it because we, they filmed it on an old Ford truck. They dressed us, imagine, in bright blue cowboy hats. <laughs> <laughs> fringe shirts, I think they're hot pink shirts. They hot pink shirts with white fringe. And so this whole team of producers from England, they said, we have to take pictures with you because as we sang the song on the banjo. The truck bounced up and down. And the more the truck bounced up and down, the more they said, oh, do it again, girls. It's just <laughs> wonderful. Make it bounce more. Bounce more, uh -huh. girls, uh -huh. more. And they're just dying laughing behind <laughs> the cameras. And so we just <laughs> keep playing. And we didn't know we were doing that. Uh -huh. <laughs> It was fun. Yeah, he's it. <laughs> <laughs> well, my foot kept kicking the, the, the truck, truck going yeah. up and down. I have no idea, but they loved it. So well, that you, was fun. You brought you your instruments today. We'd love to hear a little bit oh, from yeah. you if you want to play a little bit. Yeah, let's, let's start with the banjo song. Okay, maybe. the banjo song? song is the one that got us a lot <laughs> of com commercials. Totally. And we're glad because the banjo, thank goodness that oh, yeah. Amy learned the banjo because that got us a McDonald's commercial, Heineken. And a Microsoft. That's right. That's and right. self talk like, Amy? Yes. Well, I took... Dad is the one that bought a banjo because he wanted to play jazz banjo, Dixieland banjo. So he took off the top string, and he, I saw it, and I was messing with it, and took it sat there for a long, long time. time. It was a pretty mm -hmm. banjo. Mm -hmm. And so he stopped playing it for a while, and I picked it up and got a Scruggs book. Imagine that. And that was... Didn't know what Scruggs was, but mm -hmm. that was a banjo we book. Learned. And so I just followed the book, and it had a record. That, I, wow, I just <laughs> loved it and kept trying to learn on that, so that's how I learned. Mm -hmm. Great, Let, let's hear it. Oh, sure, okay. <coughs> so you want to do Love and Levi's? This is a song on our first um, CD, and yeah. this is the song that every time we would play it, we just kept... <laughs> because we put it into a um, children's educational um, tour as well, and we had this, and the kids just loved this song because we'd show images of cowboys, oh, rodeo clowns in this one, this, and they just loved that. So the kids would go. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh. <laughs> Here we go. Get better day by day. I can see it in your blue eyes. You may see me through. If you believe in love and Venus, then I believe in you. One more time. If you believe in love and Venus, then I believe. I believe. Well done. It's well done. Well done, Amy. <laughs> well Get that done. Truck Get that truck moving. <laughs> more, girls, more. <laughs> yeah. Let, let's play one before you set it down. Oh. There's one more you'd like to oh, play. Yes. We'd love to hear just one. Now, you ask us what more. we're doing now. This is a song. Um, we had kind of stopped writing for a couple of years, living well, in we're California. We were doing that television we stuff. We were doing television Hollywood stuff. stuff. Yeah. Hollywood stuff. So, um, my husband and I, I have to tell you that story. <laughs> it's kind of a neat story. Um, this is the latest song we've written. And um, my husband said, why don't you write a song about us? It's a great story. 
And I said, okay. <laughs> it was a very hard... Honey. <laughs> honey. <laughs> it was hard to write because um, we were we were still in college. when This is the first time we met, my husband and I met years ago. And I was in college with Amy in California. And we met this family singing on a cruise ship. The family was from Nashville. Okay. They invited us to the daughter's wedding. And she's a neat friend now. Yes, she is. So she invited us to her wedding. We're still going through finals at college. <laughs> so we fly out to the wedding in Nashville. Edward's father introduces us. And he says, Edward, take this girl water skiing. <laughs> I, I, I skied once in my life. And so I said, OK. So we went skiing on the Cumberland River. That was our first date. Okay. We fly back. The wedding's over. I go back to California. Edward's still in Nashville. And he's already a pilot. And he, he flew for the Air Guard. And so meanwhile, our sparks flew. But nothing, we just couldn't get it together. We're 2,000 miles apart. So years later, do you know that social media LinkedIn? Yeah, it's a it's that mm -hmm. social media networking site. Exactly. Sure. And so that we reconnected through that. And Edward says he wrote and he says, you know, I never should have let you go. So ah, there's a song there. <laughs> <laughs> so brilliant sister <laughs> I wrote a song about that. But the neat thing about this is now Edward loves Wyoming, and he proposed to me on top of Snowy Range. Wonderful, yeah, wonderful. Right. That's cool. Here it is. The song's called Cumberland. Okay. So this is our latest song, hopefully to be recorded by... Some big star. <laughs> <laughs> Sell lots of CDs. <laughs> or downloads. There you go. Wonderful, wonderful. Amy and Annie, thank you so much for being with Thanks. us on Wyoming. Thanks so much. It's been a this real so pleasure. Nice. Enjoyed it. Yay, Wyoming PBS. That's right. Yay. Wyoming, Wyoming Chronicle. There you go. <laughs> thank you.